procedure is the non-contrast CT. In the first 12 hours, blood will be apparent in almost all uh, CT scans, so a pretty good sensitivity there. But after time passes, the sensitivity of the CT scan is going to start to diminish. And at about a two days or more, when we're going to lose the sensitivity in the CT scan, you can think to use an MRI with flare imaging to look for any subarachnoid blood. If images are negative and you still have a clinical suspicion is pretty high, then you want to obtain a lumbar puncture. In these particular cases, we know we don't want to look just to the red blood, co red blood cell count because of the potential for a traumatic tap. We need to look for xanthochromia. And if the results are equivocal and you still have a high clinical suspicion, then you might want to look to some vascular imaging to try and diagnose an aneurysm. CT angiogram has really come into regular use for identifying aneurysmal sources. And the sensitivity and specificity of a CT angiogram is really pretty good. Where it starts to fall off is when the aneurysms are less than three or four millimeters. DSA is considered the gold standard. And if the cerebral angiogram fails to docu document the aneurysm, we always want to think to repeat the vascular imaging. So here's a case uh, of a patient who had an angiogram after a CT angiogram was negative. The first angiogram was negative with no evidence of aneurysm. He had a follow-up study seven days later which showed this basilar apex aneurysm. And basically the aneurysm was clotted off on the initial study and then recanalized seven days later. So you always want to follow up with imaging if you have a high clinical suspicion, especially if the blood pattern looks to be diffuse. About 10% of cases will actually have no identifiable source, and the majority of those are perimesencephalic non-aneurysmal uh, subarachnoid hemorrhages. In these cases, though, there's a specific blood pattern where the blood is mostly in the basal cisterns, and in these cases, they're thought to arise more from a venous bleeding rather than an arterial. That's the current theory. And fortunately for these patients, they're less likely to have recurrent hemorrhage, and they're more likely to have a benign course. Rarely will they have vasospasm or delayed cerebral ischemia or even hydrocephalus. Now, aneurysm re 